Alrighty everybody, here we are. November is now here. Now, you're probably going to be wondering, you know, why is this released on uh, what, October 31st? Well, it's a little Halloween present for all of y'all. And I gotta tell y'all, we're gonna get we're gonna get a lot of there's gonna be a lot of videos on the channel this week and everything like that. Um the so the update for, you know, this you know indoor football arena football circles that we're going to go through. Um it's gonna be interesting to see how things are going, you know, because you know, the way things have been it, it's just been crazy. Um, let's start with the NAL first. Um, that's the real big one. So West Virginia has been an interesting team to follow over the past two years or so, because you know, you know, you got you got the owner, you got the owner Greg Fenario. You know, still, you know, it's been a back and forth war between him and the NAL apparently. Um, now. What we do know is that this West Virginia team could be sold right back to the NAL to where they can play in 2022. Um, we know that West Virginia couldn't really have a season in 2020 because of COVID. 2021, they chose not to partake in a season, and thus things got a little bit, uh, a little bit contentious. Um, do you know that league that there are some league fees that are apparently twenty five thousand dollars, and that there are three year deals associated with those league fees, as as Massachusetts has demonstrated, and you know there was all sorts of different things going on. We, we didn't know when all this was going down, but apparently now West Virginia pretty much might be sold to the Albany Empire and Orlando Predators owners. It just Depends, you know, it just depends on how things work out. Uh, I really don't know what's going to happen with this team, uh, in all honesty. The other big thing that happened a couple weeks ago after I released my mid October update was that Tommy Grady was basically, um, he said that he didn't get his bonus and stuff like that, but apparently he did later on. You know, it was under the table, and, you know, non. You know, it's like not, it's not written, it's not a written agreement, you know, so, um, I, I, I don't, I don't remember how everything played out, but apparently, you know, Grady gets basically suspended by the league, and it, it was, it was those under the table type funds, you know, again, that are just under the table, no written agreement, you know, that's gonna be a thing with under the table type deals, that's how the indoor game has been for years, and, I, I, again, I just don't know, you know, enough. I mean, it's a more of a he said, she said type thing, you know. Or rather, he said, he said, you know. Um, so, again, you know, I'm pretty sure Grady is enjoying his retirement after winning another NAL championship. Uh, you know, after winning another, at least another Arena League title, the NAL's title, and now, you know, now an AFL and an NAL title, you know, two titles in three years for Al for Albany. Um, nothing about the schedule just yet for the NAL. Um, that I assume that will be released later down the line. We're still trying to figure out what in the world, who in the world is going to be in this league now. There's now there's apparently a rumor about Oklahoma City and San Antonio. I believe if I'm looking at this correctly. Let me check it again. Let me check again. Yes, um, actually, New Orleans. Excuse me, New Orleans and Oklahoma City. I don't know how that's going to work out. I don't think that's going to work out. I'm, pro I'm pretty sure it's probably just smoke by the arena indoor football insider guy. Uh, but it is what it is there. Um, the NAL is at seven right now. And again, I don't know who else is going to join because you know there's a lot of things that ended up shaking out towards the end of the month. So the IFL, there's the schedule. It's out. It's finally out. Um, you know, there's a soft free agency period that's happening. Um, Iowa's got a new head coach, Frisco and Spokane. You know, they are, you know, getting new head coaches and stuff like that as well. 
Um, Columbus, they aren't going to play in 2022. They'll be pushed back to 2023. And we have a 15-team league with two conferences this year, the Midwest and the West. Now, the schedule is going to be 16 games once again. Um, there, there's a lot of quirky things that are wrong with this thing. You know, like San Diego's playing two games in the span of 96 hours in only four days. Like they're playing a Monday night game and then a Thursday night game. Again, there's a lot of weird dates for games, I assume due to arena availability. Like there's a, like three straight Monday night games in a row. I can count on a Sunday game or a Friday game or maybe even a Thursday game. But there's Monday games in there now for some reason. you know. And again, the IFL decided to go back to 16 games for some reason when... The sweet spot is 14, you don't need 16, but whatever. Whatever, man. And the schedule's just completely imbalanced to the point, you know, like teams like Frisco's playing, you know, the, it's supposed to be mostly in your own division, your, mo your own conference, but yet Frisco's playing like five, or S Frisco and Massachusetts are playing like five or six teams, you know, that are not in, you know, their conference, their division. So it is what it is there, I just don't know. Uh, but yeah, 15 teams for the IFL this year. Uh, I honestly thought something was going to go wrong, you know, with one team at one point. I mean, I don't know. You know, there were there were some rumors about, you know, Nas Wranglers. There were some rumors about Bismarck. I mean, everybody, you know, I mean, there was, but these rumors got shot down pretty quickly and everything like that. So... You get 15 teams, 16 games. It's going to be a long season. We're going to go all the way up, I believe, until August. And yeah, that's kind of late for the IFL, honestly, to have, you know, a championship. I mean, uh, I think we've had some August championships before for the IFL, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but, yeah, 16 games, 19 weeks, three buys for everybody. Um... Again, I'm, I'm happy for the season. If the schedule has to be revised at any point, like this, like I, pr like I presume the CIFs will, you know, I'm gonna be really, really pissed off at that. You know, I'm gonna be really, really angry with that. You know. So yeah, so July 16th will be the final day of the regular season. March 12th will be the start of the regular season. So that means. That means that this weekend indoor football will be returning in March. It will be that weekend. It will be that that that, um, that week of the first week of IFL games. So like expected episode by you know I don't know when it'll 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 be in March. That's a comp that'll be a good confirmation now that we can talk about indoor football again for. A weekly basis get another weekly video out for that and that's gonna be interesting it's gonna be fun to see how it goes um, the AWFC now there's been like some joint practices and stuff like that there's also been apparently there's been some allegations against the Tri-City for Rush these are unconfirmed uh, players are getting signed uh, I do not know what there's a lot of allegations against Tri uh, against Tri-City Rush for a myriad of reasons. I don't know what all these reasons are, but they're there, and it is what it is there. Um, if these allegations are true, then, you know, and I haven't really read up on these allegations at all, so I, I don't know. So how about fan-controlled football? We, we, we're back to talk about fan-controlled football again. Um, now, the teams, the, new two, the two new teams for the FCFR 8 Oki and KOD and yet t these two teams are going to be used with in conjunction with NFTs. Now if you don't know what NFTs are, these are some things that are apparently bad for the environment or whatever. They're not really good. They're like it's some type of weird currency if I'm not mistaken. I really don't understand what NFTs are. All I know is that they're bad. And it is what it is. Um, I, I, I don't know what I don't know what this is. I really don't know. What, like I'm looking at uh, this NFT thing for the 
models for like I don't, I don't know what's going on I really don't know what's going on but all I do know is that there's two more teams in the FCF using NFTs to get you know access and some of these owners some of these people that are going to be buying NFTs are like gonna have VIP passes or something like that I really don't know how it's all going to go down FCF I believe is at six teams now um, really illegitimate at this point with the fact that you're using NFTs you know a lot of companies seem to be you know trying to get into the NFT craze and I don't like it but it is what it is there so we go on into the AAL downward here um, just to give a, a little bit of a closer here the St. Louis Bandits I believe they are alive they have a Facebook post that has been you know out there I don't know how they're alive because they ended their season with you know some shadiness in their part the in the AIFA the American Indoor Football Alliance the Tampa Bay Tornadoes they're now calling themselves the Tampa Bay Cyclones I don't I, I really don't know they changed their logo and everything is now blue instead of red I, I really don't know it's it's just there and the Arena Professional Football League I believe this is Charlotte's doing the Charlotte Thunder, they're trying to find a home they probably couldn't get into the NAL, you know, for some reason, I don't know why, but it is what it is, um, I don't know what the Arena Professional Football League is, it looks kind of fake, it looks kind of deceptive right now, and again, I don't know what, I don't know what Charlotte's trying to do out here with, with whatever they're trying to do, because I mean, you know, the Thunder, they, they, they look they look like a legitimate organization, you know. They they just have CUSA quality type stuff with the way they stream their games to Facebook and everything. Um, but yeah, the Thunder they're they're fine, you know. It is what it is with the Thunder. Um, there's really nothing else for me to say about them, you know, right now, unless you know things change. And again, I don't know what the Arena Professional Football League even is. Like, this was just announced a few days ago. This was just posted about by Charlotte a few days ago. So, that's pretty much it there. So, yeah. That's going to do it. That's, that's, that's it. That's it. That's all I have to say. Um, look out for December's update. It will be in December, obviously. Um, and... You know, it, it's going to be an interesting time to see how things go with everything for this month. Because I'm sure some craziness will happen like it usually does in the world of arena and indoor football. And with that being said, everybody, I'm going to see y'all later. It's going to, again, throughout the rest of the week, there's going to be crazy amounts of videos. So stick around, stay tuned. I'll see you again soon. Big Boy Sports, signing out.